right, let's talk about confidence intervals. This is a huge switch on the way that we think, like what we're doing. Confidence intervals. This is like a, it's really cool, but it, it really you have to like imagine. This is another thing you have to imagine. Like the sampling distribution, you never really make one. I mean, you can start to make one. I guess you could kind of make like a mini one. But the ones we draw, we're imagining taking an infinite amount of samples, sampling and sampling and sampling and sampling forever and ever. This is something else. We're actually for confidence intervals. We're switching our point of view, and I'm going to show you what I mean in a moment. Okay, so let's just make a sampling distribution, and I'll explain to you what a confidence interval is okay so here we go ready uh, suppose 50% of the students like tacos I'd be one of those students I love tacos you sample 25 students so let's see what, what do you think the sampling distribution would be well I know for a fact that the P the, this, the mean of the sampling distribution of P hats is going to be P and in this case is going to be 0.50. So if I take a sample of 25, somewhere around 50% will uh, like tacos. Oh, let me check my conditions. 50% of this, 50% of this is more than 20. Okay, my conditions are met. The standard deviation of all my this is going to be the square root of PQ over N, which would be the square root of 0.5. Uh, Q would be 0.5 over 25, which would be the square root of 0.5 times 0.5 is 0.25 over 0.25. Whoa, and the square root of 25 point of order is going to be 10%, point one zero. Whoa, so let me just double check. I got that right. Uh, point two five divided by two five is in point oh one. The square root of point oh one is point one oh ten percent. Okay, so we can make a sampling distribution. So if I went out and took sample of size 25 over and over and over again, most of my samples, because 50% of people like tacos, about 50% of my sample, a lot of my p-hats will be near 50%, so imagine all these p-hats. But sometimes I'll have a sample with more than 60%, or less than 40%. Sometimes even less than 30% of my sample will like tacos, and sometimes more than 70% of my sample will like tacos. But remember what this is. This is a pile of p-hats. It's a whole bunch of p-hats, p-hat, p-hat, p-hat. So think of all these p-hats, okay? And think of a couple, there's a few p-hats I really want you to focus on. I'm going to talk about this p-hat here. Well, first of all, let's, I'm going to draw a very, very, very important line here. This line will be the true p. This is my p, 0.50. And I'm going to talk about a p-hat here a P hat here, and possibly a P hat here. Because it is possible to get a random P hat here, or even a P hat down here, and maybe another P hat. So notice, I could get random P hats. I could, I could just randomly grab 25, and only a few people like tacos. Even though I know half the people like tacos, it's possibly that I randomly grab a group of 25 where not many people like tacos, less than 30%, maybe 20% like tacos just randomly, but most of my p-hats should be within one standard deviation, between 40 and 60. As a matter of fact, 60%, 68% of my p-hats should be within one standard deviation. 95% of my p-hats should be within two standard deviations. Okay, so here's one standard deviation. Remember we used to do this back in the day, back when we was kids. Anyway, got 68% of the p-hats, 95% of the p-hats. Confidence intervals are a little bit different than what we were doing before. We were making sampling distributions, standing at a known P and saying 68% of my P hats are between here and here. 95% of my P hats will be between here and here randomly. And then 99.7 will be within standard, three standard deviations. When we're doing a confidence interval, we don't know the true P. In a confidence interval, we're standing at a P hat. We could be standing at this P hat. We could be standing at this p-hat. We could be standing at this p-hat or this p-hat. Even if this p-hat was way out here, p-hat, 70, 80, a p-hat of 0.90. Maybe my p-hat randomly was. Maybe 90% of my sample did like tacos. For some reason, I randomly got a group of people who love tacos. We all love tacos. That could happen randomly. But we don't know. In confidence intervals, we don't know what the true P is, so we don't really know how weird our number is compared to everything else. But all we do know is this. We think this way. If 
10% of my p hats are within two standard deviations, then if 90, think about this, 95% of my p hats are within here and here. Then from, imagine me standing at a p hat now. If I stand at one of those p hats and I reach out two standard deviations, so suppose it was this p hat and I stood at this p hat and I and it was, so the p hat was 0.55. I reach up two standard deviations, 0 0.65, 0 0.75. I go down to standard deviations, 0 0.45, 0 0.35. So if I stand at this p hat and I go up to standard deviations and I go down to standard deviations, what I made was a 95% confidence interval. So if you stand at a p hat and go up to standard deviations and down to standard deviations, you make a confidence interval, a 95% confidence interval. What that confidence interval is, is a parameter catcher. You're trying to catch the true P. You're trying to catch this thing. And notice, if you did have this P hat, and you reached up to and down to, you would capture the true P. And what you'd say is, if you made this confidence interval, if you got a P hat of 0.55, and you went up two standard deviations and down, you'd say this, I'm 95% confident that between 35% and 75% of people like um, tacos. And you say this confidence interval not knowing whether or not it's actually in there. The true, the true proportion of people who like tacos is actually in there. Because in your mind, you know, you, you, you know, I don't know which what the true P is. All I know is my P hat. It's the best guess I have. So you could have randomly gotten this P hat and built an interval from that random P hat. And if you had, your interval would have caught the parameter. You're trying to catch the parameter. You could have had a P hat over here. And if you're at this P hat, let's say 0.62, and you went up two standard deviations, 0.72, 0.82, and you went down two standard deviations, 0.52, 0.42, you'd say, I'm 95% confident that between 0.42 and 0.82, between 42 and 82% of the people like tacos. And that's a good confidence interval. That's a great 95% confidence interval. And that, that interval from that particular sample, that interval caught the true P that you're trying to get, 50. 50%, which is the true percent of people that like tacos is in your interval. So when you said it, you're like, I'm 95% confident. You didn't know, but it was actually in there. So you're making these intervals. You're saying, okay, here's my sample. I know it's not exactly whatever my P hat is for my sample. I know it's not going to be exactly the same as the P, but if I go up and down a little bit, a margin of error, if I go up a margin of error and down a little margin of error, I'm pretty sure it's between here and here probably or between here and here. And someone might be wondering, well, why don't you make a 100% confidence interval? Well, I can always make a 100% confidence interval. It looks like this. Well, I'm 100% confident that between 0 and 100% of the population have this quality. You can always make a 100% confidence interval. You know it's between this and this, 0 and all. Either nobody, everybody, or someone in between. Because the, if you, the more confident you want to get, the, more, the wider you have to make your interval. Because I just made a 95. If I wanted to make a 99.7% confidence interval, I'd have to go up three standard deviations and down. So I'd go up 10, 20, 30%, down 10, 20, 30%, and my interval would be 60% wide. I'd be saying between 32% and 92%. It's a lot, I'm more confident it's between here and here, but it's not very accurate. It's like if I'm trying to catch a fish in, in, in a pond. Think about what a, a confidence interval is a parameter catcher. So I can get like a little tiny net like this and be like, doo, doo, doo. I'm not very confident that I'm going to catch a fish with a, with a little net like this, like a little tiny net. But if I got a net like this, right, with a big net, right, and, and I take it, I'm like, oh, I feel a little more confident. I'm probably going to get the fish now. I got the fish, see? You know, so the larger the net, the more likely you are to catch it. We get larger nets if we want to get more confident. The problem is our confidence intervals get wider and they're not as accurate, they're not like right, as accurate as we want them. So we know that we could have randomly got this guy, and if we randomly got this guy, we would have caught the parameter also. But the thing is, we don't know which random P hat. And we just said a minute ago, we talked about it, it is possible for you to go out and take a random sample of 25, and for some reason in that sample, not many people like tacos. And it could happen randomly. And as a matter of fact, about 2.5% of the time, Less than 30% of your sample will like tacos. Well, less than, yeah, 
two and a half percent of your samples will have a p hat less than 0 0.30. So imagine if this was my random p hat, which could happen, and I stood at that p hat. Suppose my p hat was, you know, 0.26, and I went up two standard deviations to 0.46, and down two standard deviations to 0.06. This is what I'd say. I'd do my study or whatever it was, and I'd say, well, I'm 95% confident that between 6 and 46% of the population like tacos. I did not make a mistake. My, my confidence interval was created and made perfect. I did not make a mistake. Okay? But I did catch the true, 0.46 is right here, the true P. I didn't capture it. So here I am saying, I'm pretty sure it's between here and here, and I'm wrong. And when you make a 95% confidence interval, you, you're, you're not going to be wrong. You're just not going to catch. Well, you, which will be wrong, but you're not going to catch the P, the true P, 5% of the time. So one out of 20 times you do it, so if you, if you make 20 confident intervals, one of them is going to miss it. So 95% confident means this, 95% of the intervals you make will catch the true P. 5% of the intervals will not. This is what 95% confidence does not mean. Here's what people sometimes say. I'm 95%, there's a 95% chance that the true mean is between 0.06 and 0.46. Well, that's not quite true, because you're making it sound like the true, the true mean or the true proportion, sometimes 42% of the people, like 42% of the population like tacos, but then sometimes 62. You're making it sound like the, the true, the parameter is moving around. Sometimes this many people like tacos, and so the parameter is out there. It's here. What's moving around is the confidence intervals. So your 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 confidence lies in in the in, in the interval, not well, or in the many intervals. So when you're ninety five percent confident, you know ninety five percent of the intervals. Okay, my this interval, I'm only ninety five percent sure because if I know I made a bunch of these intervals, only 95% of the intervals would capture the true P. Because notice this P is here. It depends, the P hat, every P hat makes a different interval. 95% of the P hats will make an interval that catches the true P. 5% of the P hats, 5% of the P hats, will, will, you'll make intervals from that and it won't catch the true P. Here's another mistake some people say. 95% of the p-hats are between this and this. No, you do not know where 95% of the p-hats are. You don't even know where your p-hat is with respect to the true p. Suppose you had this p-hat, 0.90, and you went down two standard deviations, 0.70, and up two standard deviations, whatever. Are 95% of the p-hats between here and here? No. Maybe only 1% of the p-hats are in your confidence interval. You have no idea where the p-hats are. Here's the deal. You're standing on some p-hat, and you're like, I'm going to go up a little bit, I'm going to go down a little bit, I hope it's in there, and you don't know if it's in there, but you just, maybe, and you're going to be wrong sometimes, but they might get it. You make a 90% confidence interval, you're going to be wrong. You're not going to catch the p 10% of the time. So when they say, what do they mean by 95% confident? You say, if I made a bunch of intervals, or if I took a bunch of samples of size, whatever it is, and made intervals from all those samples, 95% of my intervals made this way would catch. 5% of my intervals wouldn't. Okay? What does it look like, the formula look like? Well, it's exactly what we're doing here. It's pretty straightforward. It looks like this. For a... Um, for a proportion, it looks like this. I stand at my p hat, and I go up and down some margin of error, right? I go up 20% and down 20%, and hopefully, you know, two standard deviations, up two standard deviations. So it's just some p hat, plus or minus some number. In this case, we did two standard deviations. And we know in our case here, standard deviation is square root pq over n, and two is just a z-score. Two, the reason why I went down two, I went from a z-score of negative 2 to a z-score of positive 2 is, I went up a number of standard deviations. A z-score is the number of standard deviations away from the mean. I went up 2 and down 2, so the z-score I used was 2. So really it's just up some z, and that's called the critical z. So you stand at your p-hat and you go up some number of standard deviations. If you want to make a 99.7% confidence interval, you go up and down 3 standard deviations. If you want to make a 68% confidence interval, you go up and down 1 standard deviation. Nobody makes those. 
And, and what happens is, you know, when you want to make this thing, sometimes people are like, wait a minute, we don't have P and we don't have Q. We don't have the true P. So you think, what's the best guess of the true P? You use the P hat. And you use the P hat here and the Q hat here. And this is the formula for it. This is actually is now called the standard error, but whatever. Anyway, this is the formula for a common interval. You stand at some P hat. You reach up some, a couple standard deviations, down a couple standard deviations, and hope you catch the true P. You might not catch it. The thing is, you don't know. You'll never know. Get used to it. That's what statistics, like what we do, is we just kind of say sort of what kind of might happen, we hope, or think, could.